Okay, good morning, students. Uh, I hope I'm audible to you. Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Okay, so I guess few students are still to join, but I guess let's let's start right. So our last lecture was about uh, soma clonal variations that we discussed. I guess right. So. Can we just quickly revise what are soma clonal variations and uh, what are their applications? Yes. So, <clears throat> sorry. Who's go? Uh, who will tell me what uh, what are soma clonal variations? No one. Pada nahi kisi ne. Yes, Sanjana Sharma. What are soma clonal variations? Yes, please go on. Ma'am, uh, genetic variations uh, <clears throat> that are observed among uh, uh, progeny plant uh, and uh, uh, which is obtained from, uh, which is obtained after uh, somatic issues also in vitro. Yes, so somatic <laughs> variations are basically variations which are uh, you know, which we obtain genetic variations basically, which we obtain when plants are uh, obtained after a tissue culture in vitro, right? So theoretically, what we want that we know that when we regenerate plants from the somatic cells, we should get similar cells, right? Identical clones we should obtain. But uh, you know, variations there we discussed last time also that there are a number of reasons due to which these kind of a variations they they take place. And these variations they lead to certain changes, right? The, uh, what were the basis for a variation? We discussed that it could be the karyotype changes, it could be the changes in a chromosome structures, or it could be the single gene mutations also, or mm, maybe some epigenetic changes such as DNA methylation, or due to the some transposomes or jumping genes which are present, right? So there were a number of reasons which were uh, leading to these kind of a variations. Though uh, it, it 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 started when people they studied they they never wanted these variations in their plants right so in the beginning it was always treated as a negative thing right why these kind of a variations are being obtained but when they uh, started studying these variations they found that uh, some noble variants can arise from these plants and these can be used right say um, examples are there was some 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 flower uh, that flower was. Uh, geranium i guess right so they developed some new variety out of uh, this uh, due to the soma clonal variation then uh, they they also said that the disease resistant varieties can be developed this way uh, and uh, abiotic uh, stress uh, cold tolerance right or a stress resistant variety could be a cold tolerance variety or could be a salt tolerant variety so in this way they found that these these can be used or these can be exploited in certain ways right but limitations are uh, there obviously with any applications we know the there are certain limitations also so the it 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 takes time sometime to analyze such variations or to study the variations which are being produced are novel or not they are not very novel right so definitely a lot of patience is required because not all changes that we obtain they are novel and in number of times it happens that the variants uh, they are uh, not very useful or not very useful changes have been introduced in them, right? So we need to be um, careful at that stage, right? So today we are going to uh, study about uh, uh, another topic which deals with the production of a haploids and a triploid plant. So what are these haploid plants? What are their uses? And what are these triploid plants? And what are their uses, right? And how these plants uh, are being generated through plant tissue culture methods. So that uh, we are going to discuss today, right? So, uh, haploid culture. So plants are generated through uh, tissue culture techniques. Also, haploid plants, and uh, sometimes through normal breeding techniques. Also, 
uh, other than the tissue culture these plants were being generated right so hep haploid culture if we talk about is is basically a, um, a technique used to produce haploid right haploid plants we all know that plants are diploid they have a two set of a chromosomes so haploid plants or haploid plants which are generated they they have the half the number of the chromosomes that the original plants have right so this this term or a haploid culture was uh, first studied in 1922 by a person called blacksley and he 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 it, it this happened naturally at the time tissue culture was not there right so he reported the natural occurrence of haploid condition in datura plants due to parthenogenesis right so we know uh, the parthenogenesis is basically a term used when uh, uh, you know it it is a natural form of asexual reproduction so naturally it occurs and uh, it it occurs in number of the Uh, number of plants also in number of the animal species also right so it is a spontaneous development of uh, embryo from unfertilized egg cell so it is called a parthenogenesis number of plants are being produced by this method right so uh, this was he, he this was the he was the first person who observed this phenomena naturally occurring in a plant and the process of parthenogenesis is the only natural cause that leads to the spontaneous production of a haploid so naturally parthenogenesis is responsible for production of such plants then until 1960 haploid production was uh, again it was done by hybridizing two species of a plant or polar irradiation right so hum uh, plants haploid plants kaise obtain kar sakte hain ya to hum sirf uh, egg cell se plant develop kare or or do we just use the pollen for the development of the plant excluding the other one so that's why that's how we are go- getting the haploid plants then guha and maheshwari 1964 he introduced the first uh, uh, introduced the first haploid embryos and plantlets by culturing the excised anthers of a datura in a lab condition so he did this in the lab condition through tissue culture method then this was performed on the nicotiana tabecum which is considered as a model species for anthra culture experiment nicotiana uh, or a tobacco plant number of a nicotiana species nicotiana benthamiana nicotiana tabecum these are the model plants which are used for lot of plant studies even even in the viruses or plant viruses we uh, sometime may transfer the viruses to these plants and then we see or we we maintain the viruses on this plant so these are the model plant that we use so after the first report a lot of people they started working towards the in vitro production because it is easy and uh, see in a in a natural condition it happens there by chance or in some plants but when when you w- want to work uh, or when you went uh, we want to go for a haploid production plant uh, in vitro conditions so it is more easy then as compared to the natural condition so we can generate as many plants or as we can used uh, such such uh, uh, you know uh, techniques for production of our haploid plants and which can be exploited later i will discuss in the uh, how they are being used so now a lot of done a lot of research has been done in producing haploid plants in, in normal, a lot of plants such as maize rice uh, and the wheat plants these are being produced and uh, uh, lot of these haploid plants are produced from a anther culture of more than 170 species and 30 species they are reported from in vitro female gametophyte culture right so both ways can be uh, used to generate haploid plants so what are the techniques which are being used for haploid plant plant production so they can be produced in vitro and uh, in vivo both techniques so first in vivo techniques it, it is the same endogenesis will be used in in vivo also and in vitro also just the procedure will be different so again in in vivo this is again uh, you know we develop the plant male derived haploid embryo from a fertilized egg in the absence of or elimination of the female nucleus so this is how we are going to, because androgenesis and andro, the male part is important here so now advances in research have generated several approaches to perform procedure under in vitro condition though earlier in vivo it was being used then we have a gynogenesis as the name suggests so development of embryo from unfertilized eggs or the ovaries so here uh, the zygote formation or fertilization event 
does not occur but cell division of the egg is being initiated now this condition forms haploid sieves of a completely maternal origin right so these are the two processes here then there are some other uh, factors such as we can use certain kind of radiations also to eliminate the pollens or the, or the other other female counterparts and we can generate haploid plants so ionizing radiations such as x rays and gamma rays and uh, certain other non ionizing radiations can be used to treat pollens which are employed in pollination of a normal plant and then this this process can lead to destruction of germination of the pollens but it does not affect the egg, egg cells this in, uh, induces parthenogenetic embryo development in the plant right now uh, the first study of a radiation induced haploid production was reported in triticum monococcum and later experimented in several commercial crops so this this technique has been used widely then there are certain chemicals also by which we can treat the plant such as um, nitrous oxide or amylic hydrazides these are being to produced used to produce haploid plants and some mitotic inhibitors have also proved to be very helpful in production of a double haploids so these include again uh, a tri trifluralin and uh, pronemide and colchicine colchicine is a very common chemical which is being used uh, in this process then if we talk about in vitro studies again it's the same androgenesis so here we produce haploid plants to enter or a pollen culture so in a plant tissue culture method we use enter or the pollens to generate the plant it is called androgenesis and it has been reported in number of the plants now uh, the principle involved in the process is to halt the development of pollen cells into gamete and then we we give it a certain suitable environment to develop into a haploid plant now the two types of androgenesis are being recorded here there is a direct androgenesis and indirect androgenesis so in direct androgenesis the formation of embryo is directly from pollen or microscope um, uh, without the callus formation here right so uh, directly from the pollen we take but callus is not formed in this case whereas in direct androgenesis the embryo is with the callus formation stage so there is a callus formation stage and after that the further plant production takes place now the development of haploid through this process depends upon the factors again what kind of a donor plant we are using what is the stage of microspore or a pollen right what is the physiological status of the donor plant and and if what are the uh, are we treating the anthers with some some other chemicals or some other uh, uh, methods we are using so all those uh, conditions are being taken into con this consideration then we have a gynogenesis again as the name suggests so here haploid plants are developed through the ovule ovary ovule culture known as gynogenesis again uh, this approach is used where androgenesis is not very affected in producing haploid plant usually they prefer the pollen grains but in those plants where that technique can be cannot be used this can be used so this has been used to produce about 19 species using this approach and uh, this can also be used right so these methods have been very useful in quantitative trait analysis a uh, mutational studies identification of the recessive traits and hybrid production with the particular traits and these methods the other important point has that they have reduced the time which is required for a cultivar development when we are doing it in the lab conditions through a plant tissue culture method so time taken is very less right so a lot of other studies in the future can provide more uh, insight into these processes right so if we talk about applications so they the development of a pure homozygous lines can be done by this method so in plant breeding it is very important to get pure homo homozygous lines right which is usually we do lot of selfing to 6 to 7 generations and then a homozygous line is being obtained right but when we use the anther or a pollen culture it can be reduced to a few months or just a year so this these genetically pure homozygous lines are used for breeding as well as genetic research purposes and again this can be useful for breeding of these plants which have more elongated zooline phases so those plants those phases can be reduced by this method and in a less time a plants can be regenerated then induction of mutagenesis haploid cell cultures um, are useful material for induction of mutations and to study the effect of a mutations 
so why we need to study uh, the effect of different mutations because different mutations can produce different kind of a changes in the plant some can be useful and some can be harmful so those studies can be done very well on the homozygous plants right so this can uh, this method can overcome the masking effect of presence of a dominant gene and the screening method for detection of mutational effect is also easier by this technique if we go for then generation of exclusively male plants so by haploid production some dioecious male plant or diheploid plant containing both y chromosomes can produce super male plants also right so in case of asparagus male plants they give more yield than the female plants so haploids are they are being produced from the anthers of the male plants and then the chromosome doubling they can go for a process of a chromosome doubling which will produce a super male plant with the dub, double y chromosomes right and then subsequently we can vegetatively vegetatively it can be propagated and cultivated further so in these cases these are useful then again again we came uh, up with the point which is being used or which is being uh, done uh, we we've seen this application in all the techniques that we have studied till now development of a disease resistant or insect resistant varieties so haploid production can be used for introduction of a disease resistant genes into the cultivars right then established cultivar can be crossed with a donor resistant species right then haploids are developed and they can screen for resistance and you can further process can be followed so they say the easier method to develop a disease resistant cultivars by this method right so these are the Uh, uses of the haploid plant and what are haploid plants. So all you used to need to remember and know is that what are haploid plants, how they are generated, and what are their applications, right? And with this, there is another small topic which is about endos endosperm culture or a triploid plant. So I thought I should teach this side by side because haploid and triploid plants they are being generated in the not the methodology is a different but uh, since then it's it's like a haploid plants and a triploid plants so i thought in one way i'll tell you that you'll be able to remember in more detail right so in diploid plant we know the endosperm is triploid what does that mean that means it is having three sets of a chromosomes right it is why this happens this happens as a result of a double fertilizations which is a very unique process which is being seen in the higher plants right so during the fertilization process what happens one of the male gamete it fuses with the egg to form a zygote and which form embryo we know that but the other male gamete fuses with the central cell which contains two haploid nuclei now this second fusion frequently result in the triploid structure which is known as endosperm and we know the function of the endosperm right the endosperm is a formed as a result of a double fertilization and a triple fusion and is present in all endosperm fam uh, families except one family which is orchidaceae family it rests in all it is being noticed it, it is being present there so one of the important characteristic of a triploid plant is the seed sterility right so seed sterility is definitely not very beneficial for those plants we where seeds are commercially used so in those plants we cannot use this method or this this technique is not useful but these are more important in the trees and the shrubs which are important for a biomass and a soil conservation because now they can promote vegetative growth by preserving huge amount of a photosynthetic energy normally which is channeled to produce seed and a fruit production so hum agar wo avoid kar de we don't need any seed and a fruit production we just need biomass in those cases this technique is very useful then again certain foods bahut sare fruits aise hain jisme we don't want seed for example in papaya papaya now new varieties have been uh, introduced which are seedless varieties because we don't like seed in papaya we don't like seeds in um, grapes we don't like if, even if apple are seedless it is fine for us right so in those those fruits or those fruit trees uh, this techniques can be exploited right so triploid in some plants also for example there is one plant micanthus the seed sterile triploids have been grown to prevent seed dispersal in the environment so some some harmful plants some some harmful plants which we don't want them to grow or because plants at the end they disperse through the seeds only so we don't want them further so that can be prevented if we are producing the seed sterile triploids 
or those plants are being generated it can be used again polyploid production has been utilized in breeding several crops and uh, in addition they, they exhibit disease resistant also they delayed flowering also and lower fertility in some cases now these phenotypes are considered to be favorable traits traits and from for chromosome doubling we know that we can use certain chemicals such as colchicine as i told you earlier they have been used earlier also for uh, treatment of the uh, plants with this chemical uh, these plants can be generated right again these chemicals they inhibit cell division after chromosome doubling which result in the polyploid cell formation now chromosome doubling has occurred as a result of this chemical treatment and higher priority level plants can be produced by this method right so as compared to conventional methods endosperm culture provide easy one step protocol for a triploid plant production and the time which is needed for triploid plant production is lower than which is being used by a conventional method so by tissue culture method in a lesser time we can use and the parent climatus nature of endosperm and the absence of vascular tissue make it unique and excellent experimental system for in vitro culture studies also so we can use them some other in vitro studies also again endosperm culture is useful procedure for production of triploid from a diploid plant and compared with conventional chemical treatment endosperm culture saves a lot of time this time saving aspect will play an important role in a quick production of a polyploid plant especially in the tree crops which takes several years to flower so this technique can be exploited in such such plants where either we don't require seed or whether we want to go for the seedless production of the plant where seeds does not play a very important role but not definitely in those plants where seeds are the only way of propagating or uh, you know sp uh, spreading further so in those plants we cannot use this technique but otherwise where seedless plants are required or we want to go for a seedless plant or where we want to go for a biomass production we don't want any seed in a less time because the production of a seed take it's a long process right a seed will be formed then fruits will be formed then seeds will be formed then the after the fruits are being used and the seeds are generated and then they go under some dormant period and they are be definitely been taken up by if it is in the natural environment they are being taken up by the birds and they are being dispersed to the other parts so it is a long process right so uh, this is all for i will stop here will not go further this uh, because we covered two topics today so this basically covers our module 1 module 1 uh, uh, is done so we'll start with the module 2 so module 1 we have done about the Uh, basics of a fundamentals of a tissue culture we did the embryogenesis organogenesis we did micropropagation also we did soma clonal variations also and today we did the haploid endosperm culture and triploid also so this with this the module 1 is done and after module 1 uh, i would like to go for one small internal exam also right so please prepare this module 1 and the date I'll, i'll tell you shortly not this week maybe next week uh, we can go for one internal exam of this uh, plant tissue culture right so just just go through this go through the topics go through the um, points that we have discussed and the study material that i have provided you i just try to go through all those things so we'll take one short internal assessment also right so okay if if there is any question or anything you can please ask your questions also it's open for question okay fine so i think you are done so i'll just post uh, assignment question just quickly uh, and also i have i have posted your assignment uh, presentation assignment for plant pathology also i uh, uh, posted the topics also i posted the groups also and they are the guidelines also so we are starting this presentation from um, this week only this th thursday we have a practical exam practical class right so we are going to do it in the practical class so please check your group carefully check your dates carefully they are not going to be postponed we are not going to postpone any date 
right so just go through that uh, details right now if there is any confusion you can ask me but then we have maybe one or two group scheduled for this thursday so make sure you present that right excuse me ma'am yes ma'am this is manaswini yeah manaswini uh, ma'am on 27th i actually have an entrance exam so uh, but my group is presenting on that day so what should i do the 27th entrance exam is... you have an entrance exam for some okay 27th just a moment assignment yes let me see okay you 27th okay this thursday you have exam Yes, ma'am. I have one tomorrow, and then I have one on Thursday. Okay. So tomorrow and a Tuesday, but twenty seventh is Thursday, na? Yes, ma'am. I have one tomorrow, and I have another one on Thursday. Acha Thursday also you have. Okay, mm-hmm. let's do one thing. Twenty uh, seventh, we have another group, group six also on twenty seventh, right? So let the group six present on the twenty seventh, and yours I will reschedule. Just a moment, your group I will reschedule on. Uh, okay, you guys can present on the third Feb, right? No, third Feb we have already two groups. Yeah, third Feb we have already two groups. You can present on tenth Feb. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Let I will reschedule to tenth Feb group one also. Thank you. It it will be just the last time we had this uh, assignment presentation, right? So every group will uh, the group who is presenting other other groups they are going to ask questions, and uh, marks are given to the other groups also for asking questions, right? And and the group they are uh, group who is going to answer they are go- also going to get marks. So I'm I'm going to divide. everything into different points like the how presentation of the group the uh, overall uh, group presentations aapne kaise prepare ki i mean the overall presentation and then the how you are answering the questions and how the opposite groups or all other groups are asking questions so they will be also marked for this right so just prepare last time you did very well you all did very well so i thought this time also will go for this kind of a presentation right but this time the fact the problem is the time that we have a very less time this time we have to complete everything by the february end so that is one reason that we are quickly doing it right okay so uh, another group that is going to present is uh, just a moment we are going for 27th we have a sahiba wala group hai na sahiba ishita and namrita you guys be ready right Sahiba, Ishita, okay, and Namrita. Okay. Right? You guys be ready. Just follow the guidelines. I've given the headings also that what all you have to include, so it will be easy for you. And and one thing I forgot to mention. Just just try to when when you are talking about a particular disease, try to focus on when you are talking about the loss losses. Try to include the losses in India about because all these diseases are present in India. So just. along with the losses when you will discuss that what are the total losses caused by this disease in the world try to include the references where losses are being given by people in india also that like this much losses are occurring in india whatever 5% to 100% whatever losses are happening right okay so let me post one assignment question for today Okay, assignment is being published. Please quickly submit this question.
okay students in the meanwhile please give your attendance as well adhish mishra ayushi jain present ma'am sam present ma'am devanshi sharma ma'am she is facing some network issues ishita arora present ma'am janvi singh present ma'am chetit singh manaswani namrata pal present ma'am present ma'am nehal joshi present ma'am rupal joshi present ma'am sahiba present ma'am Sanjana, present, ma'am. Shakti, Shakti, Shivani Mishra, Tanvi Sharma, present, ma'am. Prithi, Vivek, present, ma'am. Yukta. Present, ma'am. Yuvraj. Present, ma'am. Define so. Uh, ma'am, I'm also present. I had network issues. Who's this? Ma'am, this is Manaswini. Okay, Manaswini. आपके बाद बिल्कुल different आ रही थी. I could not recognize. Fine. Okay, students. Fine. So please prepare for your assigned presentation and. give me some date for your exam for internal of this uh, tissue culture also whenever you feel that because abhi exam start nahi honge i am sure hum jitni jaldi finish up karenge it's good for us right fir baad mein sare exams hote hain and you guys become like overburden with the exam so just suggest me some date which date you would preferably it could be first week of feb no problem okay thank you so much i'll see you then next class